Hello and welcome. So in today's video, we are going to talk about history taking in medicine. So whenever we are taking history in medicine, we need to follow a sequence. First of all, in history, we ask about identification or patient particulars, followed by previous admission records, chief complaints, history of present illness, history of past illness and drug and allergy, functional inquiry, also known as system review, personal history, family history, socio-economic history and these all are followed by physical examination. After doing this, we summarize the case and then make differential diagnosis. Now why is a good history important? A good history is important because if you take a proper history, we will be able to diagnose 70% of cases from a good history. Another important aspect is that all the histories that we take are medical record. So these medical records can be used as a legal document. So taking a history is very important by this view also. Rapport with your patient and patient party is equally important while taking a history. If you have a good rapport with your patient, you will be able to elicit a better history in a friendly environment. Patient party are important because there are conditions where your patient won't be able to give you proper history. So the patient party who accompany your patient are the informants. So it's again an art to choose an informant. Informant should be someone who is in close contact or who is with the patient when the patient develops signs and symptoms. So if a patient has come to you who was staying away from the home in a hostel or somewhere like that, their friends are the good informants rather than the first order relatives or the siblings. So it's important to understand that not always the first order relatives or siblings are the most important informants. So reliability of the informant has to be justified before taking history. So we will now talk about individual headings. So in identification, we need to record name, age, gender, occupation, address, religion, hospital number, date of admission and date of examination. From name, we get a clue of whereabout of the patient. Patient belongs to which country or which region of a country. Also, we get a clue about the religion of the patient. And whenever you talk with your patient with their name, it helps you to develop a better friendly environment for history taking. Age is important because there are many diseases which are more common in younger age and there are many diseases which are more common in middle age. Similarly, there are diseases that are more common in elderly people. That's why age is very important. For gender, there are diseases which are more common with male like ex link recessive disorders, especially conditions like color blindness and few disorders like autoimmune diseases like SLE and thyroid disorders are more common in cases of female. Occupational history is important because there are many conditions where patient develops disease because of the occupation, like occupational diseases, example being pneumoconiosis. Address is again important because there are many diseases which are very common in a particular region of a country or a particular region of the world. In religion, like Muslims, those who have circumcision in early years have less chances of developing penile carcinoma. But there are religions where they consume more meat products and because of which they are prone to develop diseases like colon cancer. Hospital numbers are important for identification of the patient. Now chief complaints. So whenever we are taking chief complaint, we should be very specific with this. These are the signs and symptoms that prompted the patient to seek medical advice. So these are the immediate complaints because of which the patient has come to you. So each chief complaint you have to mention with the duration of the symptom or duration of the complaint. If there are more than one chief complaint, then that should be put into chronological order. In history of present illness, what we do is we elaborate the chief complaints in the word of patient. So you will explain the chief complaint in history of present illness under the headings like onset, duration, progression, nature, severity and character, also aggravating and relieving factor and associated symptoms. 
So if you have more than one chief complaints, in each chief complaint need to be elaborated under these headings in history of present illness. So once you have done with history of present illness, then you should ask for history of past illness. So in this we list all the illness that are unrelated to the present illness. And these are all illness that are experienced in the past. These include childhood diseases, serious injuries and surgery that did not require hospitalization in the past. You have to mention of each disease with an approximate date, severity, duration, complication and sequelae, which is very important. Never miss this specific diseases in past history. So you can remember these diseases by the mnemonic threads that includes tuberculosis, hypertension, rheumatic fever, epilepsy, asthma, anxiety, arthritis, diabetes, depression, and surgical history. You should always mention drug and allergy history. So if your patient is already on medication, you should be you should be asking the patient about the duration duration of the medicine medication then compliance whether the patient is taking the medicine as per the advice or not and whether there are any recent changes in the medication which are like any recent changes that are made by the treating physician to the patient and their medication similarly you should be always writing any known allergy to the drugs these are very important aspect in history taking so now talking about systemic review this is one of the most important aspect of history taking so this is also known as functional inquiry or system review you have to take in detail all the signs and symptoms which are related to each system of your of the body so why is systemic review important because it helps you to have a clear understanding of the history of present illness it is also a double check on history of present illness it permits the examiner to group signs and symptoms that need to be considered with the present complaints. It also guides to concentrate on a specific system during the physical examination. So systemic review, these questions can be put as a positive history and also a negative history. So whenever you are taking history of a patient and you want to know whether the respiratory system is involved or not, these are the different checklists you should always remember. You should ask the patient about cough, expectoration, hemoptysis, chest pain, shortness of breath, wheezing or asthma and cyanosis. So again I want to make you clear over here that this can be positive history. If the patient is having disease that is attributed to respiratory system, these are the different checklists, these are the different signs and symptoms you should be asking in history and elaborating each in history of present illness. But if you are suspecting a patient or if your patient is having disease that is attributed to some other system of the body then these are the topics that will be included in negative history so systemic review is important for both positive and negative history so if you want to review cardiovascular system in history you should elicit or you should be asking about these signs and symptoms like dyspnea palpitation orthopnea in the form when the patient lies down whether the patient develops shortness of breath or not and if the patient develops shortness of breath how does the patient become comfortable that what is the number of pillow that is required then history of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea in the form of after the patient goes to the bed after two to three hours of going into bed patient develops shortness of breath wakes up from the bed goes to the nearby window and tries to take fresh breath similarly history of swelling of the feet chest pain seen cough a stridor and hypertension is to be taken. So when you are reviewing gastrointestinal system, you should be asking history of loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, dysphagia, heartburn, abdominal pain, bowel habits, jaundice, bloody, tarry or clay colored stools and hemorrhoids. In genitourinary system review, the questions that should be asked are about flank pain, frequency, urgency, Noxuria, hesitancy, dribbling, dysuria, also about hematuria, pyuria, incontinence of urine, history of venereal diseases, and if the patient is female, you should be also asking about menstrual history. So record menstrual history as when the patient developed menarche, what is the interval between the periods, 
duration of the flow and amount of flow. As the example I have shown in this slide, the patient developed Minarch at 14 years of age, the cycle is of 28 days and the patient has uh, flow for 5 days which can be profuse, moderate or normal. As the patient says, you, you have to mention that in your history. And if the patient has already developed menopause, you should be mentioning that whether the patient has perimenopausal or postmenopausal syndrome or not. In integumentary system review, you should be eliciting in your history about history of dry or moist skin, rashes, ulcers, urticaria, hair distribution, pigmentary changes and changes in fingernails. Allergy is an important history that to be elicited in systemic review. So you should be asking about infantile eczema, drug sensitivity, urticaria, hay fever and asthma. In musculoskeletal system review, history should be taken about bony deformity, joint pain or swelling, limping, loss of function of limbs or joints, muscle weakness or wasting and also of leg swellings like in cases of elephantiasis. In central nervous system review, in history we should be asking about poor memory, lack of orientation, abnormal body movements, vertigo, diplopia, anesthesia, hyperesthesia, insomnia and nervous breakdown. So once you have taken your system review, if your patient is having a symptoms that are attributable to a particular system, those symptoms to be included in chief complaint and explained in history of present illness as a positive history. And then the remaining systems should be put as negative history to rule out that the patient does not have disease attributable to the other system of the body. So personal history. In personal history, you will be asking about sleep and appetite, food and type of diet, whether the patient is having veg diet, non veg diet or mixed diet boil and bladder habits, then you should always ask about addiction, addiction to alcohol, smoking, tobacco chewing, churras, ganja, marijuana, IV drug use or illegal drug abuse. If the patient is female, history of menstrual, obstructive and contraceptives should also be included. Now these are few things that are very important to know in most of the times during your clinical practice and also during exams you will be asked about quantification of a smoking. So whenever you are taking history of a smoking, you should ask the type of a smoking, whether the patient is using cigarettes, cigar, pipe, the number of cigarettes per day and duration of a smoking in years. So to calculate pack year, what we do is we multiply number of cigarettes a smoke per day with duration of a smoking in years and divide it by 20. If you don't divide it by 20, you get a smoking index that is a smoking index is number of cigarettes smoked per day into duration of a smoking in years. So why is it important? So if your patient is having pack years of more than 20, patient is having risk of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And if the pack year is more than 30, risk of cancer increases. Similarly, in case of a smoking index, if the patient's smoking index is less than 100, the patient is called mild smoker. If it is in between 101 to 300, patient is said to be moderate smoker. And if a smoking index is more than 300, the patient is said to be heavy smoker and they are at higher risk of developing lung cancer. Quantification of alcohol is another important aspect in our part of the world. So you should be knowing what are the type of alcohol and their content by percentage. So if your patient says that they, he or she take beer or cider, it contains 5% alcohol, wine, champagne and homemade locals have 15%, spirit, vodka, whiskey, rum and gin have approximately 40%. These values may vary depending on different resources, but these values I have collected as a approximate values to remember for exam and also during your clinical practice. So when you talk about quantifying, so in traditional volumes, a tea glass will contain 150 ml of water. 150 ml, water glass will contain 250 ml and a beer bottle has a capacity of 650 ml. So now the next thing is very important. So whenever you are calculating the unit, one unit is equal to 30 ml of whiskey, 
और सेम ग्रुप लाइक स्पिरिट वोडका रम और जीन विच इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड एम ऑफ वाइन और शैम्पेन और होम मेड लोकल विच इज इक्वल टू टू हंड्रेड फिफ्टी टू थ्री हंड्रेड एम ऑफ बियर और साइडर एंड दिज ऑल आर इक्वल टू टेन ग्राम ऑफ ऑल्कोहल सो वाट इज डेंजरस ड्रिंक वेन यूर पेशेंट इज टेकिंग मोर देन ट्वेंटी वन यूनिट्स पर वीक इन केस ऑफ मेल पेशेंट्स एंड फोर्टीन यूनिट्स पर वीक इन केस ऑफ फीमेल पेशेंट्स देन दैट इज डेंजरस ड्रिंक टू डेवलप ऑल्कोहलिक लिवर डिजीज रिस्क इंक्रीजेस वेन यूर मेल पेशेंट टेक सिक्सटी टू एटी ग्राम पर डे फॉर टेन ईयर्स एंड फीमेल पेशेंट टेक्स टेक्स ट्वेंटी टू फोर्टी ग्राम पर डे फॉर टेन ईयर्स फॉर सीरोसिस ऑफ लीवर दिस वैल्यू इज मोर देन वन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी ग्राम्स पर डे फॉर टेन टू ट्वेंटी ईयर्स विच इंक्रीजेज रिस्क बाई ट्वेंटी फाइव फोल्ड्स फॉर ऑल्कोहलिक डायलेटेड कार्डियोमोपैथी एट्टी ग्राम पर डे फॉर मोर देन फाइव ईयर्स इज इम्पोर्टेंट हिस्ट्री नाउ केज क्वेश्चनर दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चनर सो ईच लेटर विल हैव एन इम्पोर्टेंस सो फ्रॉम सी वेदर द पेशेंट फेल्ट नीड टू कट डाउन द ड्रिंकिंग वेदर द पेशेंट बिकम्स एंग्री एट अदर क्रिटिसाइजिंग द ड्रिंकिंग वेदर द पेशेंट फेल्ट गिल्टी अबाउट एक्सेसिव ड्रिंकिंग एंड वेदर द पेशेंट ड्रिंक्स ऑल्कोहल एज एन आई ओपनर इफ देर आर मोर देन टू ईयर्स देर इज प्रॉब्लम ऑफ डिपेंडेंस सो नाउ वी विल टॉक अबाउट फैमिली हिस्ट्री सो वेन एवर यू आर टेकिंग फैमिली हिस्ट्री यू शुड बी आस्किंग अबाउट फादर एंड मदर देयर एज देयर हेल्थ एंड इफ दे आर डेड यू विल बी आस्किंग अबाउट द डेट एंड कॉज ऑफ डेथ ऑफ दिस पेशेंट सिमिलरली इन केसेज ऑफ सिवलिंग्स यू विल लिस्ट द सिवलिंग्स विद देयर एजेस देयर हेल्थ स्टेटस एंड इफ एनी वन ऑफ दम आर डेड यू विल मैंसन द कॉज ऑफ डेथ फैमिली डिजीज अगेन यू नीड टू राइट डाउन ऑल द हिस्ट्री ऑफ ए स्पेसिफिक डिजीजेज इन थ्रेड्स एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दिस इन प्रीवियस स्लाइड्स लाइक थायराइड डिसऑर्डर्स हाइपर टेंशन रोमैटिक फीवर एपिलेप्सी एंगजाइटी आर्थ्राइटिस डायबिटीज डिप्रेशन सर्जिकल इलनेस एंड सो ऑन एक्सपोजर टू कम्युनिकेबल एंड प्रिजेंस ऑफ जेनेटिकली ट्रांसमिटेड डिजीज इज अगेन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फैमिली हिस्ट्री सोशियो इकोनॉमिक हिस्ट्री इन सोशियो इकोनॉमिक हिस्ट्री यू विल आस्क अबाउट द ऑक्यूपेशन फैमिली इनकम एंड एजुकेशन यू विल ऑल्सो आस्क अबाउट द हाउसिंग वाट इज द टाइप ऑफ हाउसिंग वेदर इट इज कच्चा हाउस और पक्का हाउस वाट आर द नंबर ऑफ रूम्स वेदर देर इज प्रोविजन फॉर टॉयलेट किचन एंड वेंटिलेशन यू शुड ऑल्सो आस्क अबाउट द सैनिटेशन फैसिलिटीज एंड देन सोर्स ऑफ वाटर लाइक हाउ फार इट इज फ्रॉम द टॉयलेट और हाउ फार इट इज फ्रॉम द होम so once you have taken socio economic history you complete your history so hopefully this video will help you to develop a better art of history taking thank you very much for watching and any questions and suggestions regarding the videos you can always contact me at asrafjivanjyoti2060 at gmail.com you can always mail me or you can use the comment box and yes please don't forget to like subscribe and share the channel we will have similar videos in upcoming days about various other topics thank you take care